What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of the HTC Sensation for T-Mobile. With a name like that, let's see if it really is. Alright, so in this review of the HTC Sensation, we are going to cover call quality, Sense 3.0, speed, screen, battery life, build quality, and all the specky goodness that comes in those categories. So let's start with what matters most with the phone, and that is of course call quality. The call quality on the Sensation is probably amongst the best of the phones I've tested, and I've tested quite a few. I actually did a 30 call test as opposed to my usual 20, and I had zero dropped calls. I've got an associate about 20 minutes away whose home is located in a complete dead zone. We hooked up the Sensation to his Wi-Fi calling there, and ordinarily where he wouldn't be able to get reception with the Wi-Fi calling, I was able to pull in a much stronger signal. So if that's what you rely on to make your phone calls, don't worry, the Sensation is going to work out wonderfully for you. The speaker quality here is also outstanding, and one of the cool features of uh, this particular phone and some of the other HTC built devices is that when you want to access the speaker phone, you don't have to actually hit the speaker button. If you just turn it over mid-call, it's going to activate that speaker for you. It's quite loud for you speaker files out there, which sounds like a creepy word, uh, but it works very well. If you use a speaker phone in a car or in a meetings, uh, you're going to get a pretty decent audio fidelity. You get that little bit of tinny sounding that you'd expect from a speaker phone, uh, but it does work quite well. All right, so now let's talk about Sense 3.0. Uh, this is sitting on top of the latest version of Android, that's 2.3 Gingerbread. And there's a lot of stuff that's new and unique here. This is the first phone that's actually launched with Sense 3.0. We've covered a bit of it in previous videos, and ordinarily in phone reviews I don't cover the OS skins, but since this is the first time we've really seen it on a phone, I feel like it's important to talk about some of the things that it does. So let's start with the lock screen. Here is the lock screen of Sense 3.0, or here's one of the lock screens of Sense 3.0, and I'll show you what some of those are. So ordinarily to unlock a phone, you just slide something up or slide it to the left or the right, and you are unlocked. That is the same here with Sense 3.0. However, you can access uh, four applications of your choice. You set icons here in the preferences, and you go ahead and jump right to them. All you gotta do is want to jump to, say, camera. I take the icon, I drag it right to the circle, and it's going to launch that camera for me very quickly. And you can set that for really any application. It's a nice handy feature. Uh, you can do a lot of customization here as well. If you go ahead and go to that customization window, you see you've got lock screen. And you can pick from different HTC choices from what you'd like. Now, all of them are gonna give you four options down below for applications. Uh, some are gonna show pictures, some are gonna show stock prices, weather, some are gonna show weird chronograph clock. Uh, but you have a choice for what you'd like. So you can customize the device as is the Android mantra. Uh, any way you like. I really liked the option of having those lock screen shortcuts, uh, made it a bit easier. You also have some 3D animations here, and you can sort of see them as I scroll along. And if I scroll really quickly, you can see them sort of show up there. Hopefully I'm not making people nauseous. But there's a lot of 3D animations here. This is not a 3D screen, just appears to sort of be 3D. And this is of course taking advantage of the beastly processor that is found in the HTC Sensation, and that is the Qualcomm built 1.2 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon, which is pretty beastly. Uh, and we'll talk a bit more about that uh, as we go. Uh, you also have some quick setting options as well that's going to be found in Sense 3.0. Um, there's a lot of goodness here to dig into. The quick settings, when you slide this down, go ahead and jump right into quick settings, and you can see what those are right there. Nice and simple uh, and pretty elegant to use. I like having those options readily available. All right, so let's talk about what I know you guys all want to know, and that is the speed. Is this thing as big a speed demon as you would expect? Benchmarks really mean nothing to me. Uh, actual phone performance is what matters most. Uh, and this thing absolutely hauls. Browser speed, application speed, everything is just absolutely lightning fast. So we will load up technobuffalo.com and we are just over the 4G network here. We're not connected to Wi-Fi. Flash is enabled. Um, content loads very quickly. And one of the problems I've seen with Android or at least the older versions of Android, the slower processors, uh, was that as you did your scrolling down, you got that checkerboard pattern that would show up, or pinch to zoom wouldn't be all that fast. So I'll let all the flash content continue to load here. 
Uh, you have the option, of course, to turn the flash content off and you get quicker load times and a bit better battery life. But as I scroll here, there is no problem with this phone keeping up with it at all. In fact, the only limitation is how fast I can scroll my finger. Pinch to zoom is really quick, very elegant, um, and just works about as well as I've seen on any mobile phone. Um, so from a browser standpoint, absolutely outstanding. Speed on this phone is a screamer. So this is a 4G phone, and I'm quite a speed test junkie, so I ran a decent amount of them. And you can see what my results were here, and this was on the 4G network with about two to three bars in my area. Uh, ranging from about 1.2 megabits per second down, uh, all the way as high as about 5.8, generally hovering on average between the mid to high twos uh, with about one and a half megabits per second up. So you're not getting lightning fast network uh, speeds unless you're in a you know, faster 4G area. This is just subject to where I am, uh, but I found it to be plenty quick for what I needed to do. So next, let's talk about apps. Applications here launch extremely quickly as you would expect from a device of this raw horsepower. So I wanted to open up something like Angry Birds Rio, which who doesn't want to open up Angry Birds Rio? I think Angry Birds are downloaded a million times per day. Uh, it just loads very quickly. For things you're gonna do on this device, you can go ahead and get your Angry Birds on. You are not gonna have to worry about speed at all. In fact, you're not really even gonna have to worry about application management. Uh, oftentimes, some of the issues novice Android users have and complain about crashing uh, is due to their application killers. So whether or not you are, what applications you're killing are essential to the core processes. You're not gonna have to worry about that so much here. Of course, Gingerbread has uh, that option built in, but you're not gonna have to do much app management because this thing is just an absolute beast, beast, beast of a cell phone. All right, so let's talk a bit about battery life because being a beast of a cell phone, you're gonna get a bit of a drain on battery. So we're looking at a 1,520 milliamp hour battery life. And if you never using this phone, but knew the specs and you were to guess what battery life was gonna be on it, I'm guessing like me, your first thought would be, it's probably gonna be between normal suck and super suck. Uh, and the answer is it's much higher on the super suck. Uh, battery life here is not very good. So let me give you a, a summation of real world usage. Generally take it off the charger, around 7, 7.30 in the morning, about an hour and a half of phone calls. Uh, sometimes connect to the Bluetooth, sometimes right up to my ear, sometimes using that fancy speakerphone we talked about where you just go ahead and flip it over on its screen. Uh, regularly checking two exchange servers for emails and doing some pretty decent web browsing. I was dead, battery completely shot by about 4.30. Um, so if you are a heavy user, user of your phone, if you got a phone like this, chances are you're going to want to take advantage of it. Or if you play a lot of games, you're either going to need to pick up an extra battery or make sure you always have some sort of charging mechanism handy. Battery life was just not that good. And one of the big contributors to battery life is, of course, this screen, which is a 4.3 inch SLCD, and that stands for Super LCD, with a resolution of 540 by 960. Uh, I was not overly impressed with the screen on the phone. Uh, when you look at some of the Super AMOLED options from Samsung or the Retina display um, on the iPhone 4, uh, you can certainly see a difference in screen quality. Let's go ahead and jump and let's look at some text here. So I'll go ahead and go back, open the browser. It's probably gonna have to load up the website again. I'm super zoomed in. So text looks fine. It's not that the text looks bad, um, but it just doesn't pop the way it does on the Super AMOLED screens. Now, if you ever looked at to buy a television, you go into Best Buy or any of your big box retailers and you see two TVs next to each other, uh, chances are you can always see a difference. But if you pick up the lesser TV and you bring it home and hang it on your wall, that's the only TV you're looking at. And to you, that TV is gonna look fine. And that's very true with the sensation. This is the only phone you're looking at. Uh, the screen's gonna look fine to you, but having the benefit of seeing a lot of screens come through here, um, this is just definitely not one of the best. So if you look at some images, for example, let's go ahead and check out some wallpapers. Um, it's gonna be tough to see to translate from the phone to the camera to YouTube. We're gonna take my word for it. The screen just doesn't pop the way I would like it to, especially with uh, some of the Samsung devices out there. So look at some HTC wallpapers. You can see what some images are here. Just isn't that bright or vibrant. Uh, of course, I've got the auto dimming sets here, so it's doing all of its auto thing. Um, one of the things that HTC is known for is their tremendous build quality, and that certainly holds true here with the Sensation. Build quality device is absolutely outstanding. I always love phones that have the battery almost flush up against the back of the phone here. You don't get that 
sort of hollow feeling that you get from a lot of phones. You get that really high quality feel. You've got that uh, metal feeling, although it's plastic, in the middle, soft touch on the top and bottom, that sort of whooshing uh, display right there. Uh, the phone just feels really, really high quality. Interestingly enough, the battery cover, which is generally just the back, it's actually this entire side of the device. So if I pop this up here, I can show you just quickly. The battery cover is tremendous pain to get off. Um, just an FYI, go ahead and pull this off a little bit. You can see where it's pulling off from right in the corner, and that's where this thing comes off from. Uh, so you are going to have a very, very, very solid build quality here. Uh, the camera was average, 8 megapixel camera, it can shoot in 1080p. The usual disclaimers here apply, don't leave your point and shoot at home. If you want to take a shot at your kids or your grandma or your date to send your friends, um, the camera's going to be fine in here. Uh, the front camera right there is a one, or actually is a VGA.3 megapixel, so it'll shoot average stuff if you want to do your quick video uh, chat, you know, it's going to get the job done. So overall, in a pure encompassing this into a big package, um, <laughs> this is a tremendous phone. Uh, it's definitely one of the best on the market. When you look at a phone, especially its stable mates, uh, built by HTC, you know, you bring in something like the Evo 3D, uh, you're matched pretty close spec to spec with the exception of the camera. However, a lot of phones that are going to be coming out in the future are going to have these stereoscopic 3D displays. Uh, the Sensation does not have that. Now, 3D is generally a gimmick on phones, so it's not going to be a deal breaker. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind. Uh, if you are a T-Mobile customer or you're looking for the latest and greatest Android phone that's available, that's still going to be nicely specced in a two-year period. And even when quad-core is coming out, it's still going to be a fast phone. Uh, this is going to be a wonderful choice for you. And if you're on T-Mobile, I can't recommend this phone enough. Uh, absolutely outstanding experience. You're going to get some of the best that Android HTC has to offer, and that really is a killer combination. So guys, what do you think about the HTC Sensation? Is it your next phone? Does it deserve a spot in your pocket? I'm uh, curious what you guys have to say. I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I will see you in the next video.